Hello friends, today I have a story to tell you that I have been excited to tell you for quite some time. It's a story about an old mountain hotel in a town in Telemark of Norway that had been closed for 16 years when one day an artist named Zoe Eskis walked through the doors and saw new potential for this strange place. And it's a story about how Bendik and I, two newcomers to this town with no friends or connections in the area, decided to jump onto this crazy idea that Zoe had, together with a bunch of other creative people. The whole project has been a big dream for many of us here in this town for the last two and a half years. To turn this place that had been closed and only seen dust and silence for 16 years into a place where artists, writers and handcrafters could have their studios. A place for exhibitions, concerts and events. And a place where creatives could build community far away from the big cities. This September, we've been working on the opening, the official opening of this art center. And it has made me think back on so many of the things that have happened since I moved to this town. Most of you that have followed me for a while know quite a bit about that already. But it really feels like it's about time to tell you this part of the story. But to do that, we have to go a little bit back in time. We moved to this town because I had been there before, studying as a writer's student a few years back. Good morning! <laughs> In our new home! We had both finished our studies and we wanted to try and live from our creative work. And we needed a place to stay that was close to nature, that had quite cheap rent. In this town we knew that we could get all of that, but the thing that we didn't have was any friends there. We moved in the midst of winter and also in the midst of the pandemic. And the winter was really cold and beautiful, but it was also kind of challenging for us to start again in the midst of all of this. Some people close to me were also going through something really, really rough at this point. And I was feeling so sad about it that I was struggling a bit to get out of bed some days. And I didn't really share that much about that in my videos because it wasn't and still isn't my story to tell. When things are hard like that, it can be really tough not to have any friends or connections where you live. But fortunately that didn't last for very long because the apartment that we had moved into was kind of small for Bendix artwork and he eventually had to start looking for a studio. So he started looking around on Facebook, asking if there were some people that maybe had a barn or a shed or a room in their house that he could rent as a studio. Two people reached out to him, one of them being Norit, who was really open and kind to us and later became a really good friend of ours. And the other one being the artist Zoe, I think maybe some of you might remember this. And Bendik is out and he is meeting uh, an artist from this area to talk a little bit about maybe sharing a studio that she has. And it's, uh, it's very exciting. I hope uh, this will go well. So as it turned out, Zoe's studio was actually a 500 square meter basement in a gym building outside of the city center. And Bendik ended up renting a space there. It was really big and really cool and industrial, but it had no windows and it was kind of cold during the winter. 
Still, Bendik was kind of happy having a studio and we were really grateful that we were able to get into this artist community that Zoe had already built around herself in this town. Some new connections like that were just so needed for us at this time. And I'm pretty sure that if you only follow me on YouTube, that is where you guys have been left off. And you might still think that Bendik rents in this basement. When I looked through the footage from this time, I actually found this clip that I never included in my video. Yeah, but for different reasons, uh, this studio is not going to be forever. So uh, yeah, you guys are looking for other places, right? Mm. Yeah. Which is a bit sad, but I guess maybe there will be good things coming from that yeah. too. Maybe it will be the start of something good. Yeah. So it's kind of funny to see us talking about it this way, because we were so right. <laughs> it was definitely the start of something new. There's a lot of colors. I don't know where to go. So, Bendy, what are we doing today? Where are we going for? Only feeling blue. We're going on a trip. We're going to test our new e-bikes. We need to check if they are strong enough to go up this uh, mountain, because we can't tell you that much about it, but uh, yeah, let's just say it's going to be interesting. So we'll take them along, right? Mm. So we are going all the way up there. Are a lot there. Of voices that little place there. Drowning in the <laughs> sea. There's too many voices talking back at me. There are a lot of choices waiting to be made. Too many choices. Making me afraid Dreams are not the same for me Standing by the shore So this is Liefjell Kunstcenter or Liefjell Art Center as you would say it in English. And it used to be where the road to the mountain ended, but nowadays the road goes way further. Uh, and it used to be a hotel, but then uh, it shut down and it was actually empty for about 15 years. Now it has become Liefjell Kunstcenter and actually there is about 10 artists that have their studios here now, working in the hotel rooms and some other rooms in this building. And there's plans for a gallery, that we are working on and also there are many rooms for events and stuff like that as well and yeah maybe one day we will also be able to have an artist residency here so yeah there are many plans and also there are other plans uh, than that but yeah things evolve over time but right now it's such a beautiful artist community that has been evolving here in this building but there is a person that has been working non-stop with this project for about two years now that I really want to talk with about the whole project. So I'm going to take you guys inside and then we're going to have a little chat with Zoe, I think. This is Zoe, and she's been a bit hesitant to call herself a project leader, but that is really what she is for this project, because without her there wouldn't be anything here. She is the visionary and the power force behind this project, and she's not the kind of leader that just comes down every once in a while to look at what people are doing and say, I want this and not that. 
She's the kind of leader who's always making soup and bread for everyone whenever we are down here working on a room. And is never afraid to get her hands dirty or lift heavy. And even though so much of the work that she has been doing on this project has been unpaid, she continues to spread enthusiasm through all areas of the project and move things forward. My name is uh, Zoe, uh, last name Eskes. Uh, yeah, I'm a visual artist and uh, um, I come from Holland uh, originally. And um, I have always been like very interested in art. It's been like an, a very natural thing for me uh, to work with art all the way from when I was young. But I, of course, created uh, art all the time and my, and my house was filling up with artworks. <laughs> so there was no space for me anymore in a while because you see, I work quite big. <laughs> I need space. <laughs> so um, I was looking for an art studio. Uh, first in Norway, I was starting with cleaning jobs, doing a lot of uh, normal like jobs to get around. And uh, that's when we were cleaning this whole fitness center in uh, uh, in number one fitness, what was it called? In a big, big building. We were cleaning it because we needed money. And uh, then I found out when I opened up the cellar door, there was a huge space there. So when I was ready with a cleaning job, I asked the owners, can I, uh, can I rent the space here? Is it, uh, is it possible uh, for me to uh, have a little studio? I have to work with some bigger projects and stuff, so maybe I can do that. And uh, the people told me that I was so welcome to start. And uh, in the coming years, I rented more and more space in the cellar, <laughs> which ended up with me uh, like renting like 500 square meters. Then in uh, 2021, in, uh, <laughs> just before Christmas, <laughs> I got a call of uh, somebody that called himself Helge Sulberg. <laughs> and he said, well, I bought your uh, building and uh, I see you're an artist that is renting uh, a huge space in this building that I bought. And I'm not so sure if I want to have artists there. So that was stress. <laughs> <laughs> I had to find solutions. Uh, my work is big, I can't just take it home in my small cottage. Uh, so I was scared that I maybe should throw away things or if I maybe should do something I didn't know what to do. Uh, and then um, out of the blue another telephone came <laughs> and that was Bendik. I had never uh, like... Um, I had a guest artist once, but I've never shared the studio like I did with Bendik um, <laughs> because I was uh, very happy to have the space and it was not necessary. But when when uh, Bendik called and was such a such a kind person <laughs> and so new to the <laughs> surroundings and he was just interested in getting to know other artists and so on, so I was like, ah, why not try and maybe this uh, owner, new owner, will not kick me out. <laughs> share the space with Bendik. <laughs> so uh, we were working um, for a while in, in the, this old industrial building. In the meanwhile, I worked with trying to find solutions because still the owner said, okay, Bendik can start, but I'm still not sure <laughs> if you guys can stay there. <laughs> so I had to kind of keep my eyes open. And then when a few months had passed, uh, he called me again. I was at work. It was dark in the winter. <laughs> he, uh, he asked me, mm, I want to show you something. Can you please come up uh, to old Leafyard Hotel? And uh, he showed me this huge, huge building uh, and it was dark and was fully packed of uh, old furniture and uh, things that this owner just had to put here just for storage. Uh, there were uh, <laughs> holes in the roofs and <laughs> holes in the floors and holes in walls. <laughs> and there was um, mold on carpets uh, in certain places. You wouldn't, you wouldn't say that now with this beautiful wooden floors. It, everything was 
covered in carpets that were uh, yeah, moldy and, and, and bad. So it was completely different from now. It was completely different. I remember. <laughs> this, this beige walls were uh, Christmas red and Christmas green. <laughs> Christmas green poles. <laughs> so it was, it was very, very weird. <laughs> but very, very nice also. So of course I was a little, it was, uh, it was uh, uh, very much about finding a new way of looking at this place. This is a, it's, it's a very interesting building and for me as a foreigner, <laughs> for me I didn't know anything about this story so that's why I just drove past it. But this build, building was uh, built in uh, 1893, a long long time ago, uh, by a doctor which was called Hock and he was a visionary because he uh, started this place as a sanatorium also. So a hospital, a hospital for people that had lung problems and um, he found this place on the mountainside here and he said it is good air here <laughs> and so nice view. This is a good place for people. And so they started this as a hospital, sanatorium, but the neighbors here were scared of sick people. Uh, they put pressure on this man to change it to a hotel. And the man was, uh, yeah, was, he was agreeing with doing that and made a soft transition because it also still was used as a hospital for a long, long time after that. So after it became a hotel, it has been, uh, been uh, used as a hotel in, in over 100 years and it became this big uh, tourist destination uh, for, uh, for a long period. And um, uh, in 2006, um, it was struggling because of the, there were changes in, in tourism and changes in uh, who were their owners here, and it didn't really work that well anymore. So that's when it, it became broke, and um, from 2006, nothing happened here until uh, 2021, when I came around. <laughs> and then you walked it. Yeah, so I, because I took Bendik up here, of course, because it, it was first uh, like Helga, he asked me, uh, do you want to do something with this building? He thought it could be a good place for artists because of the inspiration and the view. <laughs> <laughs> and he told I don't know anything about art and about art business, so you have to do it. <laughs> But you can't do it alone because it's too big building. <laughs> you have to have more people and I have to have more renters. <laughs> so Bendik was just uh, following along on the road. <laughs> and when he was looking at, I've been looking around here, he also got interested. And um, in the meanwhile, also I had started this artist network and uh, that was quite a big group already. And we had meetings regularly. And, I used this artist network which was called Mittelmark Kunstner Network. Um, I used it as like a source for people <laughs> where I could find people that maybe were interested in this project. Uh, I started it as one person and um, I was unsure about if people were interested in being a part of this, uh, if there was interest in creating something like this and now uh, two years later, we are over 10 people and we have this beautiful board which is like we can talk about everything there. We have to, to think through things and form things together. So in a, in a certain way, it was starting alone and ending up with some kind of family two years later. And um, I think that was an unexpected thing for me. And... Um, and really, really, really nice because it's not a project for one person. <laughs> it's a project for a group of people. Yeah. And um, I'm very, very thankful for all these people that jumped on board and that worked together with me with building this because um, it's unique now. By now, you're 
are probably starting to get really, really impatient to get a real tour of this beautiful building. And I'm gonna give it to you. So, I'm gonna give you a tour. I'm not gonna show you everything, because, I mean, it's a hotel, it's gonna take all day if I'm gonna show you every little nook and cranny of this house, but I'm gonna show you some of the most important places and the places where we have done the most work. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the front part of the building. This part is the oldest part of the building as well, but we're gonna start in one of the more new parts of the building, which is the main entrance and the lobby. So we're going in here. I remember well the first time I walked around in this building. The thought of an art center was merely a thought back then. Walking through the rooms, it was obvious that this would take a lot of work. Neither of us had any experience with a project this big and we had no funding other than what the house owner was going to put into the renovations. But there was something about that building. A feeling of lived life and history and a little bit of mystery maybe. Something about walking around there, even though it was run down and dusty, made me excited. The whole project just had this feeling of adventure to it, which I'm always looking for. And the whole idea of this art community that we might build was of course very appealing to me, being a newcomer to the area. I told Zoe right away, I'm in and I want to help out if you decide to do this. And the same thing seemed to happen with every person Zoe brought there. We were all a bit overwhelmed and scared, but the building and the community, the adventure of it all, it was just too alluring to say no. So eventually Zoe decided to go for it. And we started working. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that we still had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. But we just had to start somewhere. And we started working on the main rooms in the building. One of the first ones being the lobby. definitely done a lot of work in here like there was so much stuff in here that was like the main problem and also it was so dirty like the floor I think we've cleaned it like 10 times or something and now it's kind of starting to look like something and there was like a big soda machine in here <laughs> we, I think we were like six people trying to get that out I will see if I have the, the clip of it here The owner of this hotel had stored a lot of beautiful furniture from back in the day when the hotel was running and also some things that he collected over the years. So most of the furniture that we have in these rooms are from the hotel itself. Zoe is working on like making this ready for the big opening and uh, she's actually worked I think like a lot of the summer she worked in here like making this nice and fixing this area over here creating kind of like a cafe bar area here so now we have a lot of equipment down here for making coffee and waffles and it's really really coming together we kept the original look of this room so it's it's really nice it still looks kind of the same that it did back in the day when there was a hotel here we're gonna go into the room that was the old bar in this hotel actually and uh, which is now something completely different because now it's actually a gallery
This room is really the room that has had the biggest transformation, in my opinion. Because when we started to clear out all the furniture from this room, it was still kind of hard to imagine that it one day would become an actual proper gallery. The makeover projects in this hotel have usually started with us cleaning out the place and making it ready so that the house owner and the people that work for him can start working on the walls and painting and fixing up. And usually we've had a lot of fun doing that because there are so many funny things that you can find in this hotel. The vision is coming to life. So this is our gallery and uh, we're gonna have exhibitions here starting with the opening week that is coming up uh, we're gonna have an artist ex exhibit his artworks here his name is Åmo Varsto and uh, yeah he makes really really nice art it's uh, it's gonna be really nice in here I remember we had this vision of this being a gallery in the beginning but it was kind of hard to like really picture it because there was like a lot of work that work that needed to be done here it's really come together so nicely. Yeah. We're now gonna look at some other places that still haven't been done that much work on. So come along down into what I call the dungeon. Down here, there's actually quite a lot of these bomb shelters, which is kind of fascinating. And I'm gonna show you one of them because it's kind of spooky. So, <laughs> so we're, gonna go we're gonna go through here. Don't get yourself locked in here, people. So these rooms we have not done any work because uh, yeah, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in here. But there is something that I want to show you. Come on, screw them. Yeah. So here is a room that is like really puzzling and kind of scary to me. Like it's the colors are kind of intense, and we think it might have been like a children's playroom, but it feels like a very spooky children's playroom. So yeah, we. <laughs> It's still something that needs to be done to work on, but I just really think it's a fun like remnant of what this hotel looked like <laughs> at some point. And there's something really, really scary right here. So, I can use my lift. Oh, here we are. This is our friend, the clown. So yeah, and this is also why I think it might have been a children's room. But yeah, let's move on to some more fun places. So, let's move into my favorite room in the whole building. Then we have to go back to the lobby. So now we're actually gonna move from the new part of the hotel and into the oldest part of the hotel, the one that is from the 1800s. And this is where my favorite part of the hotel is. This is Paisestua, and it's the oldest part of the hotel. It was fully packed with furniture and dust, and again, a lot of beautiful things. It took us a lot of work to carry all of the sofas away from there, and we cleaned both the floors and the walls so that we could have one room in this building that didn't smell of dust.
After that we placed this big, beautiful table close to the fireplace. And it has been standing there ever since. Whenever we have meetings now on the house, with the board or the people that rent here or something else, we always sit around this table. During the first winter, I captured this beautiful moment when the house owner finally had done some work on the chimney and we could light the fireplace for the first time. With the fire burning in the fireplace, it was official. This was becoming the heart of the art center for a lot of the people that rent there. Many people sit there and have lunch together on weekdays, which is really, really nice. Now we're actually gonna move to the thing that I'm hoping or thinking that some of you guys are kind of excited about, which is actually Bendix Studio. But I'm gonna take you through the hallway where the other artists are working and we cannot go into their studios because they are, they are closed, people are not here today. Uh, but I will show you something that I have uh, gotten their permission to share, so let's go. Here is actually an old phone booth, by the way, and the phone is still in here. So you can uh, call up some of your friends and ask them if they want to come up here and hang out. <laughs> this is a really nice detail. The first room you find when you go up the stairs to the second floor is room 201. When I first walked around the hotel, I looked at this room and I felt like it had a lot of charm. I imagined it would be a good writer's room. And that is exactly what it turned out to be. Because today the writer, Johanna, has made herself at home here. She works full time with writing and has also become a good friend of mine. If you head up the stairs from there to the third floor, there is actually a room above Johanna's room that is almost identical. And it has become really, really beautiful after Siri moved in there. She is working a lot with sewing clothes and also silversmithing. But this room is the only room for now that is rented out at the third floor, so we're gonna head back to the second floor. So this is one of the hallways where all the hotel rooms are. and. We have people working behind most of these doors. So this is Marta, she's a writer. And we have an exhibition by Dragama, she's also an artist. And here is Ela, she is a writer, an activist as well. And here is Espen, he is a classical painter. He works with these like old traditional oil paintings. This is Simon, maybe some of you guys know him because I've actually talked about his YouTube channel at, at some point. Uh, he does have a YouTube channel and he's also a nature photographer. And over here... is another hallway. <laughs> so this is Ottar, he's a Haringfele maker. Haringfell is like kind of a violin, it's like an old traditional Norwegian instrument and he makes those and is also like a musician. Over here there's gonna be an exhibition, Emil is gonna have the exhibition together with Reinhold. There's gonna be an exhibition in there but it's not open yet and over here is Fredrik, he's also an artist and a writer. That's where I'm gonna showcase my video for the opening week. 
Um, it's not my studio, but it's just for the opening week that I'm showcasing this. And over here there's also gonna be an exhibition, uh, Billy. He was here earlier today and he put up his paintings. And then, of course, we need to go for the grand finale, which is Bendik's new studio. And it's gonna be in here. What's it called? Lille motellsal. <laughs> ah. Nei, det er motesal. Motesal, ja. Åh, oh, nice. <laughs> so now we have come full circle in this story. Bendik moved from Zoe's old studio with all of his stuff and started establishing his first ever studio by himself. Yeah. How do you feel? <laughs> I did not want to rent a studio there myself as I do have a studio at home, but I still became a part of the project by entering the board and also one of the main areas that I'm helping out in is the online presence of the place on Instagram and on the web page. It has honestly been a long process to create this studio even though it's just one room. One important thing that we did was that we drove to Oslo and collected a floor that we got for free. Bendik has dust allergy, so he didn't want to be in this room with this old carpet that had collected dust for 16 years. So we put down this floor. It's not the most beautiful one, but it's very functional. And then he started painting. During the winter, the whole art center was in a small crisis because the power bills were getting so high in Norway. So sadly, there was suddenly a very quiet time at the art center, with almost no people there. And it was kind of starting to worry us. But nothing was gonna stop Bendik. He was actually sitting there with his warm suit on, instead of turning on the oven, and managed to get by through the winter. Some other people that you could also find there braving the cold was Johanna and, of course, Zoe. So, where are you working the most in the studio? Uh, right now, uh, I'm uh, working most by this desk. Yes. It's uh, not finished at all, but uh, maybe it's the most cozy place for now. Yeah. And uh, we painted the whole <laughs> wall that is there. And then the rest of the studio on this side is uh, white. And there is actually five windows here and they all have a beautiful view of some trees and of the town further down here. And yeah, it's a very beautiful place in the summer as well because the sun shines through the windows almost all day. Another challenge that we've had with the studio is that we only had bikes for the longest time. And even though we don't mind the bike ride, biking up there in winter in snow and ice was sometimes quite challenging. But during the winter I actually started talking to the municipality on behalf of the people that rented there. And I was able to secure a bus that went there every day. And those things really only happen in small places like this. Then we had a visit from our friend Ethan, that some of you guys might remember. And he was so kind to help out to build some shelves in this room, because Bendik really, really needed some storage space. It was starting to become more spring-like and warm now, and the power bills were not as bad as they had been through the winter, which made us all very relieved. The shelves eventually formed a second room, so that Bendy can actually work there as well if he wants to. And we both think that during the winter that's going to be quite handy if there comes another high power build time. Because it's easier to heat a smaller room than to heat the whole studio. So, this is what it looks like now. 
It's a very, very inspiring place to be and I'm really, really happy for Bendik. So that was the big tour of this building. There are other rooms, there's actually another floor up here as well where there's some people working. But I think we're gonna stick to that for now. Uh, maybe I can show you that later on. And uh, now we actually have to get started working on things because there's a lot of things to do before the opening. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and uh, I hope you enjoyed our little tour of the building. So that was the story everyone. I am kind of happy that it's finally out there because I have other things that I want to share from this beautiful place. It has been a wild, challenging, sometimes draining, but also really beautiful adventure to be part of this. And this video of course only shows you a fraction of all the work and all the experiences that have been put into this project. But if there is one thing that I hope you guys are taking away from the video, it is that it is possible to build artist communities outside of the big cities. And you never know how it's gonna happen, but it might happen in the strangest ways. <laughs>